one of the things that can help you prevent burnout is I call it five, take five for you or because of my name, right? Five for Phil. There five minutes. Go. Just do take five minutes and do something for you. That could be walking around your house. That could be meditating. That could be prayer. That could be whatever, right? Take five minutes for you and make sure that you do that. And then I'd tell you, do that a couple times a day. When you're taking a break, actually take a stinking break. Actually get away from your laptop, right. leave your phone, set it right here so that you don't have to deal with it and get away from everything that's busy for you. And that will be so much better than just taking a three-day weekend. Good friend of mine, Phil Gerbyshack. Look, this guy is author of multiple books, hosts podcasts, does coaching, teaching, training, just a fun guy all the way around. He's going to talk to us today about burnout and finding happiness in what we do. Awesome episode. Check him out right now. Do more by doing less. With me, Charles Alexander, for small business owners, startups, and busy folks. So what? So regardless, what have you been doing? Oh, man, I've been working on, you know, just working, man, trying to get everything together, doing more speaking, doing more training, doing more coaching. I'm in Florida today with friends. I had a week last week with the Special Forces all week. It was pretty fun. Why were you with the Special Forces? I facilitate their innovation foundries a couple times a year. Special Forces from around the world get together, and I get to facilitate their events. Their innovate, and it's called an innovation foundry. It's step one of the innovation cycle with SOCOM, s and science and technology. Yeah, it's really fun, man. I love to do it. In fact, I just posted about it on LinkedIn just right before we got on. I'll have to go check it out, dude. I wish there I was go. in Florida today. I'm in Tennessee, and it's 103, but no ocean. 97 here in Brooksville. I'm in more inland Florida. It is it is hot here too, my friend. Well, I can tell the the Hawaiian shirt makes it feel like you're there. You go. Like you're right where you're supposed to be. So talking about special forces and it being hot, hot. Hey, oh, we're talking oh. about here. Uh, tell dude, I love the focus we got here on burnout. I, it's and it's not for anybody who think that this, this is a trendy topic. It is not. This is something we've been dealing with forever, but we're just now addressing. So, dude. Humor me. The, the theme of the podcast is do more by doing less. Tell me how that applies to burnout and how's, how's it a solution for burnout or is it? Yeah, well, it, first of all, it absolutely is. You have to do less, which doesn't mean being less productive. It means doing less of the crap that you don't need to be doing, right? Just like you teach, I teach the same thing, right? You got to have boundaries. You got to have goals. You got to have things like that so that you can do less by and actually accomplish more important. What the heck is burnout? Why do we see it? Why is it more prevalent? I think we're more aware of it now than we've ever been before because it is a problem, man. 76% of people, that's three out of four for those that are not math people, are experiencing some sort of burnout in their jobs, whether they're self-employed. Healthcare is probably 80%, 85%, right. right? Burnout is a massive deal, but I think we're finally aware that it's a big deal and we're actually calling it the right things. A lot of times, People would say, well, I'm just tired. I need a break. And I'm not suggesting you don't need a break, yeah. but it's not just about taking vacation. And that's what I think most <clears throat> most of the entrepreneurs I deal with, that's all they say. You know, if I just, we're, we've uh, figured out a little time or we're going to take a three-day weekend. And then, God, it, it, they've been working for three months straight without a break. And they think that's going to suddenly magically solve it. And then worse yet, they take their laptop with them. Yeah, that's not really a break, is it? I mean, you take yeah. your laptop with you. If I took my laptop with me, that that's really work in another place. That's what we're doing all the time. If we flip that around, yes, go, take that time, but take a little bit of time every single day. One of the things that can help you prevent burnout is I call it five, take five for you or because of my name, right? Five for Phil. There five minutes. Go. Just do take five minutes and do something for you. That could be walking around your house. That could be meditating. That could be prayer. That could be whatever. I right? take five minutes for you and make sure that you do that. And then I'd tell you, do that a couple times a day. When you're taking a break, actually take a stinking break. Actually get away from your laptop, right. leave your phone, set it right here so that you don't have to deal with it and get away from everything that's busy for you. And that will be so much better than just taking a three-day weekend. Now, I'm not telling you not to take a three-day sure. weekend. Not telling you not to take a three day weekend. I'm telling you that you need more than just that. What 
how, how did we get to this point? Why do we have such a, an epidemic of, of burnout? I have so many other people that will try to get in my ear and say that people just don't want to work anymore and it's, they don't have the same ethic that we used to have. And I'm seeing, you know, even though we're living in the day and age of the Jetsons, the idea that we were only going to be working 15 hours a week, I forget that. <laughs> Maynard Keynes, I think, came up with that. Yeah. And that was the big worry 100 years ago. Why, why is that not happening? Because we're actually doing more by doing more. Ooh. We're trying to accomplish more. We're trying to do more. We're trying to be busier. We're like, oh, my gosh, if I can just squeeze one more hour out of the day, right? I mean, we have all these tools that help us, but they're not actually freeing up time. They're just giving us one or two more things that we need to do yeah. every single day. You think about marketing. Marketing used to be, I'd send a flyer out, and then years later, maybe somebody would call me back. Okay, or I'd go to an event, right, and I'd drive up some interest that way. Well, now, with the digital, we're always on, we're always emailing, we're always tweeting, we're always Facebooking, we're always LinkedIn-ing, we're always creating content, we're right. always sending those email newsletters. Slow the heck down. Take the time to really think about what is most impactful. I have a client that I talked to last week. She's got a quarter of a million people on her mailing list. Good night. That's fantastic. Yeah, great for her. Yep. But she's talking about, oh my gosh, do I need to also be on LinkedIn? Do I have to be on Facebook? Do I have to be on Twitter? I'm like, stop. Why don't you invest where you're hot? Yeah. Go and just email market once a week, yeah. but make more offers in your email. She's like, oh, I can do that? Yeah. Thank you for permission to do that. Sure. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Go where is deep. And really, because the goal with all the marketing is to get them into your email newsletter so That's that right. you can talk to them one-on-one. -on -one, so you can have a more private conversation. My little newsletter, I only have about 500 people on my little newsletter list, but I get between five and 10 responses to almost every newsletter that I send. That's not awesome, but I'm also not asking for a direct call to action. I'm talking comments. Correct. Wow, this was really good. So if when, not if, when I start making more offers, well, now I'll start seeing my bank account grow up because people will now say, oh, I didn't know that I could work with Phil in that way. And I would say for folks that are listening here, tell people what you do. Now, not just what you do, but sure. add some value and then tell people what you do and how they can work with you. Make it really easy for them. Make it really plain, really clear and do yeah. that. And the more offers you make, the more opportunity you have to work with you. you I see, I get your newsletter every mm -hmm. single time that I send it. And I notice that there's an opportunity to work with you almost every time. That is fantastic. That is what we want because you're adding value. You're giving me an idea. And then you're saying, by the way, if you like this idea and you want to go deeper, now here's how to do it. Well, duh. Otherwise, mm -hmm. why, why am I on your list otherwise? Right. And, and what Phil's adding here, it, it's a marketing twist, but it's still about avoiding burnout. You got that client with a quarter of a million people. Dude, hey, tell her I'll trade with her today. She can give me a quarter million people. I'll give her all of my social handles, my YouTube, whatever else she right? can have it. But even in, gosh, even in doing that, trying to make it as, as simple as possible and Side note, you own the emails. Now, granted, you, you don't own Yahoo or Gmail, but email changes less than the social media algorithms. That's a more of a direct conversation anyways. And that might be a different topic for a different day. But yeah, dude, those are great tidbits, a good example. But what about the people listening? And dude, I fight this all of the time. I even do it with myself. Like, well, I, I've got to do all of these different things and you just don't understand. And I'm just so busy. I've got to go check LinkedIn and then Instagram and then Facebook and then go to 14 other places and create all the different types of content. And that's marketing only. That's not even talking about management and reading your financials and self-development. What do you tell folks that can't give things up or won't give things up? I'd ask, why are you holding on to that? What's the output, right? What is the real benefit of doing those things? Is the real benefit ego? Is it an ROE, a return on your ego? If it is, okay, well, <clears throat> then accept that you're feeding your ego. You're not feeding your bank account. Right. And that's fine. But most of the time, I like to feed my bank account. I don't like to feed my ego so much because my ego is really hungry and it's never satisfied. <laughs> it isn't, right? I want ROI instead of ROE. I want to return on investment. I want money back as opposed to return on ego. That is not to say that I don't spend time on LinkedIn, 
But I'll tell you what, that's the last thing I do instead of the first thing I do. I take, I I do the first thing I do, because this is where my bread gets buttered, is I make sure that I write two articles a week. I make sure that I've got one podcast out a week. That's the first thing I do before my week even starts. I got a Monday and a Friday and a Tuesday, and it's probably going to go to Wednesday. I'm probably going to move to Wednesday, Wellness Wednesdays. I'll be talking about burnout and happiness because that thinks that's important, right? With that, we're going to look at how that works, but that's the first thing I'm going to do. And some weeks, honestly, Charles, that might be the only thing that I do because that's all the juice I've got because I'm serving clients. I'm on the road. I'm I'm speaking. I'm making sure that I'm recording some podcasts to stay ahead. I'm a couple weeks ahead, which is fantastic, right? All of that stuff, well, do less. Don't do more. And know that it's your ego talking that says you have to do more, not your bank account. Do you have some, and by the way, all of those are, are fantastic ideas, not to mention that you've got a, you know, you got a wife, kids, dogs, a life. You go to the gym, other things you want to get out and do. So are are there like a few specific practices that entrepreneurs or busy professionals that you recommend to them to, and you mentioned happiness, how they can find a little more happiness in work? Yeah. Well, first of all, I encourage you to time block. Okay. Set up some times when you're only going to work on a certain thing. For instance, if you're going to prospect for new business, well, block time on your calendar to do that. For me, that's Monday morning. I'm going to do research Monday morning. Monday afternoon, I'm going to do outreach. Okay, that's one thing that I do. And that's important. That doesn't get moved. So seldom, though not never, seldom do I record a podcast on Monday afternoon. That's you. Right? So I don't do that stuff. I time block that. Second thing you can do certainly is I call it the 4D method. You can do it. Okay, it comes at you. You can delete it. Okay, it doesn't need to be handled. You can defer it. Okay, schedule it for later. Or you can delegate it. Who do I give this to? And you can delegate it to Fancy Hands. You can delegate it to Fiverr. You can delegate it to Upwork. You can delegate it to maybe somebody else. Maybe you trade. Maybe you have an assistant, right? You can delegate it. So the 4D method often works for folks. Uh, and they just forget that it can work. Now, I'll tell you how that looks like for me is my email comes in. What do I do with it? Well, first of all, I'm going to delegate it. That's the first thing I do. I put it put it in a folder that somebody else can handle. And that somebody sure. else is sometimes me. I'm going to delegate back to me, but I'm going to delegate at a different time. Okay? So I'm going to use a tool uh, like SaneBox. SaneBox is going to save those. And then they're going to do it for later, right? They're going to also defer those for me. They're going to put them in, a, in, a, in an archive folder. I don't have to look at them. That really helps me because then I, I it saves me, get this, Charles, it saves me six to eight hours every single week. Good with night. Sandbox. That's an entire day off. That's an entire day off. That's right. By with Because I get, it looks like I get about 3,000 messages a week. Okay. I only actually get, well, but I get, I get your newsletter. Yeah. I get other newsletters, but I don't yeah. read them all. I don't read them all. Just because I get them doesn't mean that I, that I actually sure. read them. How many do I get? Well, I would say close to 10% of that. That's 300 messages. Now, many of them I can scan through. Like I get, I get a notification when somebody books time on my calendar. Do I need that notification? Nope. I look at it. It takes me three seconds. Okay, delete somebody right. that I expect. Cool. If not, then I'll go and delete the calendar appointment. But it doesn't take very long. So that 4D method is helpful. Time blocking is super helpful. And then... If you want to get a little bit of happiness back, I'm going to give you an interesting hack. We all hear, oh, <clears throat> I should compete with myself, right? Competition, comparison is the thief of yep. joy. And I agree with that. But instead of comparing yourself to the best version of yourself, I'm going to encourage you instead to compare yourself to your favorite version of yourself. Ooh. What's your favorite version? What are you doing in your favorite time? So for me, I look at my week, my favorite weeks I get to spend podcasting or I get to spend on stage or working with clients. Last week, working with special forces, one of my favorite weeks, 40 hours with them. Wow. That's a great week. That was part of my favorite self that I get to do. I'm not comparing that. I'm not telling you that 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 was better, worse, the same as last time I worked with them. I'm telling you, though, that work is my favorite work, and I love to do that. And I feel really good that I brought my favorite self to work with that all week. I love the idea that you said to compare yourself to your favorite self, not just your best self or God forbid somebody else. Cause those, what you're mentioning is like some of the things that are my quote unquote happy places when I'm 
talking to somebody like you on a podcast or when I'm on stage or I'm working in a group with clients and it's not necessarily my admin stuff or the CRM or creating more content or putting another video out there that I might not have been really happy with, comparing yourself to the favorite, what, what you like doing the most of. Now, you had mentioned time blocking and I, man, for years, I, I have seen people, myself included, not do a very good job with time blocking. We'd, we'll block out time and then we'd either don't follow it or we'll block out time and we'll put 52 things on the calendar, which I guess was helpful because it, if it's on the calendar, maybe it gets done, but that's not what me, that's not what you mean, I think, by time blocking. No. You give, us, I mean, give me an idea of time blocking strategies or what you do that works. Sure. So two hour blocks, no more than two hour blocks right. to do something super important. What are the most important things? And not everything is important. I would tell you that I only have time blocks three days a week. My Mondays, my Fridays when I'm creating content, and then some sometime during the week. I've got that. So that's six hours that I time block. Six hours that I time block. I block an hour on Fridays for content because I've been mm-hmm. thinking about it all week and I just yeah. get it finished up, cleaned up. Two hours for prospecting, two hours for prep, and then an hour for something else that I need to do on, on a Wednesday. That could be that could be cleaning up a podcast, that could be writing about it, that could be uh, doing a partnership, uh, whatever that is, right? So I block sometimes two hours, sometimes one hours, and then I don't override it with other stuff. I don't typically take any appointments that doesn't come through my calendar link. And that way it's blocked. That way it's blocked. You can't block time. I mean, Charles, you can't block over this time that you and I are spending together today right. because it's on my calendar. That's right. Well, the only person that can is me. Now, why the hell would I do that? Well, sometimes there's very good reason, but most of the time it's just because somebody else puts some priority on you that is supposed to be important, but it isn't really important. That's so right. make sure that you stick with your most important stuff. Make sure that you do that. And that is what you block for time. But I would say no more than six or eight hours a week okay. you want to block. Because any more than that, you feel too hemmed in. You got too much going on. You're like, oh, my gosh, I have to stick to this. And then nothing else gets done. That's not the answer either. I've often told people to treat those blocks. And I love the way you pointed out that you only need, what, three or four big chunks, two hours at a max. To treat those like doctor's appointments, you know, dude, I, last year, Halloween of last year, I got uh, both knees replaced. And then after I got both knees replaced, I had a ton of physical therapy that I had to go do or I wasn't going to get better. And I put those on my calendar and I didn't get just so busy. I couldn't do it. And I couldn't tell you the number of clients I followed up with. You talked about prospecting, sales, podcasting. Hey, Phil, did you get to that prospecting this week? We talked, oh man, it's just so busy. I just didn't get to do it. How did you get busy for the one thing that's going to feed your family? Well, I just had it, like you said, had a ton of email, had to check all the, all these different things, had sales calls that popped in that people didn't show up for just, just crap like that. So block out time, treat it like a doctor's appointment. Don't let anything else jump in there. And for me, I even have to color code mine because if they're not, because it's so visual, What, what kind of color coding do you do? Well, my, my, my prospecting time is green for money. There you go. Right. And then my, yeah. the, my other important time is orange because orange is my favorite color and I'm a little bit colorblind. So anything else is blue. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, I follow the same thing. I, and a lot of people do their sales calls are green. If you look at your week and I don't see much green. I know that it's going to be well, a date, date week. Date, date night might be, we might go from Ruth Chris back over to a waffle house and mama don't like that. We're, we're going to have to ramp those up. That leads into the other thing. I've heard you talk so much about time blocking, time blocking, but time blocking also means you got to set boundaries and entrepreneurs, busy professionals aren't good at this. What do you mean by setting boundaries? So a boundary is something that you say no to or no at this time to. So after work, do I check my email? Yes, I do, right? At the end of the day, I check my email, but I don't respond, or at least I don't send messages in the middle of the night. Now, I've got one client right now that is on the West Coast that I have to, I don't have, I get to work with sure. until eight, eight o'clock at night, Eastern time. I'm responding to them. They're the only ones, though, that get my immediate attention until eight o'clock at night. Everybody else, the boundary is five o'clock, we're done. Another boundary is I know that I can only take so many meetings in a week. 
So if I've got too many meetings, I'm going to have to push them. I'm going to have to push them. Another boundary for me is if I'm not feeling 100%, I'm going to have to move the meeting. So I had a meeting that I finally got the chance to take today because earlier this week, I haven't been feeling 100%, probably because of the heat, to be honest with you, Charles, Mm -hmm. because it's so dang hot right here in here in Florida. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going to push that. That's a boundary for me. Any other boundaries uh, that I have, right, is saying no when I mean to say no. No is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. So if not I mean to say no, it's not a negotiation, right? If I say no, like if, if you said, hey, Phil, I need you to do this, and I mean no, I'm just going to say no, thank you, Charles. Yeah. And that's it, right? I'm going to be polite. So for those of us that are polite, I'll say no, thank you is a complete sentence. That's, that's for the rest, you can just say it. no. Yep. For the rest, you can just say no. With that, you can also schedule those regular breaks. That's a boundary as well. So I make sure that I get up at least a couple times in the morning and at least a couple times in the afternoon, just those five minutes for Phil, Mm -hmm. take those five minutes, and I do something just for me. Now, that could be, like I said, could be just walking around the building, could be real simple, could be going to get a fresh cup of coffee, spending that five minutes just sipping that coffee and enjoying that coffee. Could be five minutes where I go and get a fresh glass of water. Whatever it is, though, set those boundaries, keep those boundaries, and actually enjoy the boundary because those boundaries are what are going to keep you fresh throughout the rest of the day. The big issue I see with so many people is that they're worried their clients won't respect the boundaries, which is BS. If I want to go to Dunkin' Donuts at midnight, guess what, Phil? They are Clothes. And I don't throw a brick through the window. I don't have a big temper tantrum. Other boundaries that people think that they can't have is, well, they, they, clients only want to deal with me. They don't want to deal with my VA or the automation. I, they just have to have me personally, which look, dude, there's a brown box that shows up on my front de- front door every single day. Jeff Bezos has delivered 0% of those. I don't get to talk to the main guy any, anytime I choose. And I don't, I, I, I'm okay with that. So make sure that you understand anybody listening, watching that if you set boundaries in place and you get, you, you don't, you're not even required to tell people why, but feel free to and say, Hey, look, I'm only taking X number of meetings this week. That way I am fully present and I can be my best and do my best. If I take too many meetings, then I'm hurting other clients. I'm hurting you or better yet. If I take your call right now, I'm supposed to be on the phone with Phil. I don't want to do that to Phil. Phil wouldn't make me do that to you. So you set up boundaries and feel free to tell people those. And, you know, Phil said, I say no. Even then, if somebody, if I say, hey, Phil, I I really, you know, man, let's hop on a a Zoom call. We're going to mastermind for two hours and we're going to do it Friday night. Phil, he can say no, thank you. And he can also say, hey, look, I would love to. However, right now, and this is an easy phrase for any of us. I'm cutting back on certain things. I'm taking certain things off my plate. I'm not adding anything. In fact, I'm cutting things. And people almost always respect that. The ones that don't are the ones you didn't want to deal with anyways. That's right. Well, that's the thing, right? You can decide what your boundaries are. They, your boundaries don't have to be my boundaries. That's right. That's the best part, right? If you want clients who only want to deal with you, that's perfectly fine. But then say that, right? You're only going to deal with me. And that might be that might be something that is super awesome for your business. If it is, awesome, do it. If it's not, then don't. It's up to you. Decide as a business owner and then do. You would, so in looking at all of this burnout, is it affecting both men and women? What are you seeing with that? Well, I think women burn out a lot because they're expected to work out of the house and work yeah. in the house. A lot of yeah. times guys still have not, gotten to the point where they're doing they're doing the the 50 percent of the housework no so that's part of it right that that's why women certainly burn out more but guys burn out more because they feel like they're the provider and they've got to work more sure they've got to work more so i would say it's it's the case with with both but for different reasons the and i often and i never want to get in a position where i feel like i'm mansplaining but i've said this many times that my wife is a busy professional. She's a bookkeeper and she does, man, she runs circles around me at the house. I try to help and I don't try. I do help, but I'm just, she's, she's a wizard. And I have so many clients of mine, female entrepreneurs that are agency owners or coaches. And I I feel like they get tapped into more because 
they have a, a such thing called like mom guilt. That is a very real thing. And they yep. have to, they have to set up the boundaries a little quicker and then faster than most. And then in most cases they, they do it a little later. And that's, I, I, I don't, that's something that we've got to be mindful of just because somebody thinks you work from home. Somebody thinks they can guilt you into it because you have a kid. Somebody thinks they can guilt you into it because you're just used to saying, yes, that's the person that needs to set the boundaries the most. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. You should be setting those boundaries, holding fast on those boundaries, and then asking for help, delegating. Perhaps one of the things that could be done, even if your wife is a wizard, is the fact that you could outsource that. You could have somebody else do the laundry for you. Yep. You know, trade money for time, money for time. If you can, it's a great thing to do. If you can't, that's okay. So we're, Holly, we're 25 minutes in. We're, we're hustling here. So look, dude, I know you've got a book coming out on, on this topic. Yeah, The Happiness Practices will be coming out sometime in Q3 or Q4. In the meantime, before that uh, hits the table, do you have any burnout happiness books that you recommend? So there's a book called Burnout that is a fantastic book Ooh. that folks can read. Just real easy. It's just burnout, right? Really simple. Sure. And then Kate, Kate Donovan actually has a fantastic book. If you're not familiar with Kate, Kate is all about burnout. She is fantastic. She's got some of the, some of the best mm-hmm. stuff. Her her her. She's got Pride, the the Burnout podcast, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really great stuff. She's got a book as well. My brain is not finding the title of the book right now, but Kate is awesome. I really recommend Kate Donovan, C-A-I-T Donovan. Yep, check Kate out. She's awesome. And then happiness, Neil Pasricha. Neil Pasricha has got a lot of great stuff as well. Gotcha. Yeah, Kate is on my uh, bucket list to bring on this podcast. I mean, she's written several. The things where I think it's the divorcing your phone or breaking up with your phone Yeah, is is one of my favorites. So look, and, and sticking with the theme of the podcast and burnout, so I always ask folks, what should they be doing less of so they can be doing more of something else, even though I know that you are locked in. Is there anything right now at all that you should be doing less of, you personally, Phil? That I should personally be doing less of? Yeah, I should spend less time on social, for sure. There you go. I need, I need to spend less time uh, playing around on threads and more time spending writing stuff because I like threads. It's interesting. It's a new place. So it's new and shiny. So I'm like, Ooh, new shiny. I'm going to play. So yeah. So I need to spend less time and I'm actively doing that actually because I'm, I'm not making it my habit to post every day anymore. For a while there, I was posting every day. I almost got to 10,000 followers and I'm like, for what, what's the purpose of this? (laughs) So I scaled back and my follower numbers have declined down to about 9,100, which is fine. I don't yeah. care. But again, because that's ego talking. That's my return on ego. My return yeah. on investment in threads is zero. What is, so if you spend a little less time on threads, which sounds like you're doing, and social media in general, what will that allow you to do more of? It'll allow me to be better in my prospecting, my outreach. There you go. And it'll allow me to spend more time with my family. Two very important things. Very cool. Phil, how can somebody find you, my friend? If you go to thehappinesspractices.com, you can find that. You can find me there. You can also find me on LinkedIn. That's the social network that I spend the most time on. If you can spell Gerbyshack, you can find me, G-E-R-B-Y-S-H-A-K. So one of those two places, that, thehappinesspractices.com goes to my Substack, and then LinkedIn is uh, my social network of choice. Dude, that was fast, furious. I appreciate it a lot. Stay cool, my friend. You too, brother. Thanks. Don't take off just yet. I've created a new program just for you. Helping overworked entrepreneurs create their very own four-day work week in 90 days or less. Look, if you'd rather spend more time with family, friends, traveling, exercising, having the time to do what you want instead of, I don't know, putting out never-ending fires, tackling another to-do list, and checking email at 9 p.m., then go to my website, your Charles Alexander. Com. If you've created the income you want, but don't have the time freedom you deserve, then this is for you. And as always, if you don't, an angel may actually lose its wings. True story. Have a great day.